Hello, Grade 12 Geography Learners. I am back again with the question 3.3 of the 2019 examination paper. And this question focuses on land reform. It is certainly a current issue. And as you might know, many political parties are speaking about land reform uh, with the intention of trying to correct the injustices of the apartheid era. Let's see what kind of questions uh, have been asked. Right, there we have our source material, and this question is certainly speaking about rural settlement issues, and the issue is land reform. Uh, this will certainly fit into the category of a social injustice. Right? Uh, a social injustice talking about where people don't have access equal access to certain facilities to certain services and certainly land be one of them so the people of our country don't have equal access to land and thereby unable to reduce poverty state-owned land parcels right state-owned land parcels have been identified for expropriation by our president Ramaphosa. Expropriation means to be taken without compensation. So let's see what kinds of what happens in the source material. President Cyril Ramaphosa says that state-owned land parcels have been identified for the purposes of expropriation without compensation. Right? And it says here expropriation in this context means the act of a government in taking privately owned property there's it there taking on that is taking land that is owned by individuals seemingly to be used for purposes designed to benefit the overall public there's the definition the land being taken away from private land owners uh, for the purposes of ensuring that our general population is now going to be benefiting. Uh, as part of accelerating land reform, the government has identified land parcels owned by the state for redistribution, and that's important. That's one of the pillars of land reform, the issue of redistribution, where it's taking land and giving land to communities that have been disadvantaged for the purposes of ensuring food security and thereby reducing poverty. With regards to agriculture, stimulatory package, the president said that government had invested a lot of a lot in comprehensive farmer development support to ensure that restituted. Now that's the second pillar of the land reform, land restitution, where we're giving land to people that have been, to people from whom land has been taken away during the apartheid era. And communal land was productively used. Government would continue to give importance to targeted skills development and capacity building for emerging farmers. Now you might note, we have spoken about this, where we said that land has been given to people, but no support from government, no training of how to use the land, no funding. Uh, and of course, here we see the government is now trying to train these farmers, provide them with some kind of skills to build capacity in them, which means to educate them uh, regarding how to farm that land effectively. Now let's see what kind of questions have been asked here. We now go on to our question. And the first question we asked is read the extract which we have done, state of the nation address, the SONA. And the first question we're speaking about, what does the word land reform mean? Now you can see there, land reform is aimed at giving land back to those people who might have lost land in the past giving land back to bring about, to correct the imbalances of the apartheid era. 
with the intention of reducing poverty, with the intention of promoting economic growth amongst these people that have been disadvantaged in the past. So one mark, the idea is to correct the past imbalances, says it there, to correct the imbalances of the past. Right, so that will be where we define the issue of what the land reform is going to be. Next question. And here I put in your uh, small slide again here, show you what has happened. And it says, name two land reform programs referred to in the act, right? And the differences between these two programs, in other words, from the extract to land reform programs and briefly explain what those programs mean. And to help us, I put in our source material here and you can see what these things talk about. It says two land reform programs and let's see what we're now speaking about here. Right. There's it here. The one is land redistribution. There's it, the land redistribution from the source material. And the other speaks about land restitution. And there's a different the source material again, land restitution, right? Land redistribution is whereby state-owned land is redistributed to previously disadvantaged people. That means those who have been disadvantaged during the apartheid era. Whereas land restitution, it refers to a process of compensating those people who have lost land during the apartheid period. Now you can compensate either by giving them the land, by giving them some land, or you can compensate them, there's it here, by giving them their land back, or you can compensate them by giving them money to the value of the land. So these are two of the three programs uh, that fall under land reform. It's land redistribution to give land to those that have been disadvantaged in the past. Land restitution is to give land to people who have who lost land during the apartheid period. And of course, the third program is a program that speaks about land tenure. That means the tenants who have been renting that land also have rights and they can't be asked to just leave the land uh, and, uh, and asked to leave the area, right? So let's keep moving on and let's go on to our next question. Right, question number 333. Again, you find that these answers are in the, in the passage. Give two solutions from the extract that refers to the success of land reform for emerging farmers. What is the government doing to allow these farmers to be successful in so far as land reform is concerned? And we saw there skills development. There's the issue of training, skills development, and it's there from the passage. So far, you've got many marks in this particular question. It speaks about capacity building and training of these of these emerging farmers, there's a there. capacity building programs where these farmers will now attend programs that are being hosted by the government, where you will have agricultural officers visiting these farmers and sharing uh, research and ideas regarding how to farm and how to use the land effectively. Our next, next question talks about how how will the action of expropriation of land without compensation accelerate this process? Now we understand that it's taking land without having to pay for it from privately owned people. And here, of course, there are many responses. Let's see a few of the responses. There'll be no willing, no willing buyer, willing seller clause. Before this, there had to be a willing seller the buyer and the seller had to agree on the price of land. Here, the state is able to take over the land and have them redistributed. Of course, land is now more easily available and accessible 
and more affordable to people. Right? So land is now more easily accessible and affordable to the government. The government is now going to be purchasing this land. So the government will now find the land more accessible, more affordable. There's it. The government will now find this land accessible and affordable. And of course, the land can now be given away. Um, no costly drawn out legal processes. Right? It can be done quicker. Before it's a long drawn out process, take some time before land can be compensated. So there are your answers again, and you can score some good marks in a question like that. Question number 3.5, our final question, talks about discuss how the implementation of land reform can affect, can affect our agricultural production. Remember, there's a correlation between land reform and agriculture. The idea is to give people land back so people will be able to farm that land and achieve food security. Now, effect can be positive, it can be negative. And we want two ideas. You can give two ideas that are negative, you can give two ideas that are positive. Let's go for the positive ones first because we are positive thinking people. Let's see what, what the positive uh, ideas are going to be. And yes, you are right that small scale farmers will now be engaged in farming. And because they engage in farming, it's going to result in food security. It will reduce insecurity. It means that because we're involved in farming, there'll be now greater access to nutritious food. We'll be able to export. The small scale farmers will be able to export. And that will mean they'll be able to earn greater foreign capital. These small scale farmers will now be employing people on the farms. More people are going to be employed. And that means more people will now have a higher purchasing power. It's going to lead to an improvement in their living standards. And yes, you are right. That means it will decrease the movement of people from rural to urban areas. And as a result, rural areas are going to prosper. Rural areas are going to grow. Rural areas are going to develop. You're going to have low cost homes. You're going to have uh, services like schools, hospitals, improved sanitation. Uh, so again, it means positive for the um, rural area. But of course, you can have negative uh, uh, implications. And let's examine one or two of them as to what negative implications uh, this land reform is going to have. Now, we know of the corruption that takes place. We know of the corruption that takes place where corrupt officials will be selling this land to people. I mean, just now we, we, we're looking at Kauteng and we're speaking about the uh, fraud that took place by government officials in respect of the PPEs. So that would be a possibility. Uh, these farmers may lack the farming skills. They may lack the capital. They may have uh, no interest in farming. These farmers may have no interest in farming. We find somewhere here, there's the uncertainty of the ideas, but somewhere around here, these farmers may have no interest in farming. And therefore, it means that the land has been given to them um, and doesn't and has not yielded the desired uh, result, which means to decrease poverty and to increase food security. Right? Uh, these farmers could be involved in subsistence farming, and that means lower agricultural production. So there we have uh, the impact that this land reform can have on agricultural production. But we are hopeful that this is going to have a positive impact on these individuals. Once again, revise this work, the land reform. And the examiners uh, may ask questions on this being a current issue. The examiners can certainly ask questions. Do have a pleasant day and we'll see you shortly with question 3.6.
for. Thank you and stay safe.